I began this video by going into Tinkercad. This is a computer-aided design application. It's free. Go to tinkercad.com and you can sign up to use it. But what I'm doing here is I'm using it to create the engine cones that go on the back of the, uh, of, of the uh, craft. I, I guess you could call it the exhaust, um, exhaust, the rocket engine part, whatever, the cone piece that goes on the back. So I started out with a cylinder, and what I'm doing right now is I'm just placing a whole object in it to sort of hollow it out. You'll see me doing a lot of uh, aligning and grouping in this video uh, to remove areas and to center things with, with other objects. So what you're seeing now is I want to create this sort of staggered cone look with, um, I don't know quite how to describe it, but different layers. So all I'm doing here is I'm copying the cone that with the hole in it, and then I'm just centering it over the bigger or the central part. Uh, these little dots allow you to center objects, and then I will group them. I make a copy, shrink it down in size, and then uh, enlarge it just a little bit by like maybe an eighth of an inch, and then I center it with the previous two objects. So what you're seeing here is I'm creating this sort of staggered cone, sort of like a I guess a pyramid uh, would have the steps. And if you do this enough times, you end up with, it's not going to look like the exhaust on the back, but it's going to have that staggered look, which is what I want. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a larger shape to it, like a, um, like a cone or a parabola to sort of cut away so it's not so uh, sharp in its angles. So right here, I'm just making sure I'm happy with the way it turned out. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to add some, some cuts in it, sort of like, not so much because they're functional, but just they, they give it a technical look. So what I did was I created a whole object, sort of a rectangle, and I centered it with this object, and using the black dots again. And then I make copies of this and I rotate them, you know, 30 or 45 degrees. Here I'm rotating it 90 degrees. Actually, I guess, no, I'm not. I'm rotating it 45. So, and then I make a copy of that and I rotate it around 180 degrees. And all of these objects will be centered with that orange object in the middle there. And once I group them, it will allow me to cut out these notches. Because remember, anywhere a whole object overlaps a solid object, when you group them, the whole object wins. It will remove anything it's touching. So again, right here, what I'm doing is I'm just taking these objects and I am centering them to create this, this sort of uh, grid or, or these notches that I want to cut out. So it's looking good. I'm going to group this and so it can be moved all at once. And then I'm going to take these objects and I'm going to center them along the X and the Y axis. And so if you're looking straight down, you would see that they are centered. And when I group them, there you go, these notches uh, are cut out. Now, one thing I realized I did was I didn't leave anything to keep the parts, the individual parts, uh, touching. So uh, I quickly realized that what would be helpful would be to cut the notches out and then uh, put, the, put a shrunken version of the object back in to link all these separate uh, pieces one two three four five there's six pieces so here I go I'm I'm dragging that in and I'll center this and if you look in between the gaps you'll see that there's some connectivity there and you don't have to do that but otherwise when you pull these off the print mat on your 3d printer they're just gonna fall apart into individual pieces so I'm happy with the staggered shape I've got the notches cut out so now what I need to do is apply a a smoothing shape over this entire thing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a larger cylinder and I'm going to center a whole object on it. Now the diameter there is pretty close to the one that's already in the finished object. And all I'm doing here is I just want to uh, increase that, um, that connectivity all the way to the top. So I just matched it again and then I'm going to drag this down until it touches the top. And now I have this, I, all the this, all this separate notched pieces are connected, but there's that still that notch is visible. Next, I just make uh, individual copies of it, which is kind of silly. I should have made, uh, made the shape first, 
But as a habit, I always try to make a copy of whatever I'm working on and sort of drag it out to the side so I don't mess it up. I'll always have something to go back to. So what I'm doing here is I'm just um, making copies of this object to, uh, to, to 3D print. Okay, so here's where I realized that I probably should have done this first. I take a cone and I stretch it really, really high and I turn it into a whole object. Now I want this to be slightly bigger than the actual object I'm, I'm working on. So to do that, I create a, a cube that is the same dimensions as the original object that I just dragged there. I center this cone, this negative space cone, and I group them. So it cuts out this center hole, but remember that center hole has the angles of that cone built into it. Now I'll just take this cube and I'll center it with this object. And when I group it, that inside curve will cut away some of this piece, giving me a smoother, I don't know if you can tell, but, but it's definitely got a smoother, uh, more curved surface. So once I figured that out, then I made four copies and I centered those for 3D printing. Okay, after I got those four made, I sort of dragged them off to the side. I went out to Thingiverse and I found this fan, fan or this, I guess, uh, I forget what you call that, a turbine uh, fan. And what I want to do is I want to put it into a hollow ring object. So this will be the front of the engine that is seen when looking at the front of the ship. So again, all I'm doing here is I'm creating a whole object and I'm going to center it uh, into the solid object at a smaller diameter. So it leaves a, a hollow in there. So I center them and then I group them right here. I'm going to group them and it cuts out the center. Now I want to shrink down the fan or enlarge the ring. You can do either one. Uh, I enlarge the ring and then I put the, 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 uh, the uh, fan looking object in the center and I just shrink it down until it's, you know, none of the blades are, are touching the edge, the inside edge. You have to kind of look at it from all angles, but you can get it. Now, when I print this, it's gonna be very, very, um, fragile. So what I want to do is I want to put a back plate on it. So again, I create a, a, uh, a small flat circle that's a very thin, di very thin thickness, but same diameter as the, uh, as the ring here. And I just group it with the back after centering it. So now I have a solid object and I found this nose cone and I will, I'll center it, but I'll also raise it up a little bit and then bring it down to cover that center point. And this will allow me to, uh, to make what I consider a completed uh, intake uh, object for the front. It's nothing fancy. You could probably do something much fancier if you have the time. I realized I wanted something a little more extra on it, some notches to match the ones that were made on the rear part of the engine. So again, I just made a rectangular hole object and I made a bunch of copies of it and I just copied and rotated so that they would be at like the 90, uh, 270, 180, 360 and, uh, and then I made some in between. It's a little tricky, but when you, get, when you get working with CAD, you start figuring out shortcuts. So basically what I did here was I centered it where I wanted it on the shroud. Then I made a copy and I just moved it to the opposite side. Then I grouped these two objects, these two hull objects, one, two, after I moved them out a little bit, I grouped them, I make a copy, 
Actually, I need un I, I didn't want the orange part, so I'm going to select the yeah. I'm going to select the two, group them so they stay the same. I make a copy. Now I rotate those 90 degrees, put those where I want them. Then I group those with the original two negative uh, negative space objects right here. Make a copy of it, and then I rotate those things 45 degrees. And now when I center that with all these other objects, it will cut out these little notches that go all the way around the turbine fan shroud cover. All right, I have the 3D printed pieces uh, that I want to glue on, but right now um, what I need to do is there is a piece that goes here and here that's slightly raised. If you look at the, the front image here, you can see that, that panel that sort of traces around. So what I'm going to do real quick is I am going to trace one of these uh, onto chipboard to create a template, and then I'm going to cut it out and cut two smaller versions of it that will sort of maybe be a looks to be like maybe an eighth of an inch shy uh, of, of where it needs to be um, I mean a, a one, eight, one eighth inch um, inside the the bigger border so let me see what I can do here all right so I've got the got the template cut although I'm gonna have to seal that so it doesn't come off back to all right so let me just cut this out real quick and again you could use this as an original but I like to have my pieces match so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as the template to cut two versions and then I'm going to trim them 1 8 inch inward uh, from the out from the outside border and I think this will do it it doesn't have to be exact um, because you're you're basically cutting a piece that's going to be smaller than another one. You know what? There's an angle here I forgot to cut. I know I didn't. I, did, I had the line there. All right. So this is the the bigger piece right there. Fits over it. So I'm going to use this to trace two smaller versions and then just eyeball it. I'm going to cut one eighth inch around. And let me make sure this piece has no damage on it. It does not. So again, this is why I keep a lot of my scrap because for little things like this, you just, you know, I could easily toss this, but chipboard, it's not expensive uh, if you buy it in the big 25 count on Amazon, but it is. It is and it isn't because, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, a material that you use quite a bit, but, you know, little pieces like this I probably will throw away, but I try to keep... I try to keep as much as possible, mainly, uh, mainly because uh, of stuff like this. Your call, but um, ultimately I, I find that uh, I have a big old box of scraps and I like to pull it out every now and then when I'm doing stuff like this, when I start making the little pieces. All right, so there's one. Let me, let me do the second one. And then I will trim one eighth on all sides. 
actually I'll do it on one <laughs> and then I'll use that as the template for the other one all right so let me cut this out probably should have done that to begin with just cut one and then I used it the problem with using a template you know a, a, an original a piece that you intend to use on the model as a template is when you draw your pen mark uh, you're adding a little thickness and then when you cut unless you're cutting inside the blue line you're adding a little bit more thickness uh, it, it's just um, it's just best to to always create a template and then use that to create your originals so these are actually pretty accurate so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm gonna make a mark here I'm starting here and I'm gonna go counterclockwise so I'm gonna trim an eighth and an eighth and an eighth and it doesn't matter if it's exactly an eighth because I'm going to match this to this other piece so whatever one is the other will be two and then I'll just fine-tune it if something doesn't look right I will I'll fix it alright so I know that wasn't an eighth of an inch so I may end up having to do that so take this piece put it over here and see what it looks like yeah it's definitely not cut enough so I'm gonna go I'm gonna cut it here and this is just where you're sort of fitting it to see what looks good that does not look right it does in some areas and not in others so I didn't cut enough here or here all right that's fine now I need now I need to cut this and that angle right there a little bit more. Not enough cutting. And basically I'm just trying to give it a slight edge all around so that when I paint it and, and give it a wash and sort of dirty it up, these layers add realism. Um, and, I, and I've done this on other builds so I know that even though it kind of looks bad now, it will get there. All right, so I'm going to use this, and I'm going to place it over this one, and I'm going to use it as my template. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm angling my scissors a little bit so I can get really close to that line without leaving uh, an, a little extra bit of material. I don't know if that makes sense, but when I cut, when I angle it a little bit, it gets under the template and, and uh, tends to create a more accurate cut or a match for the other one this is the only one that will be a little tricky so I'll have to cut it by sight all right pretty dead on accurate equal all right let me glue those on and then we will get to gluing on the engine pieces all right so this is going to go here so I'm going to glue on the back side here I'm going to center it as best I can. Okay. And then this one will go like... So. That's a weird looking angle. I messed that one up pretty bad. But since that's underneath... Well, no, it's not. That's on top. Can't help. Can't be helped. Um, that is a weird looking angle. Okay. Well, somebody looks good enough they're gonna find mistakes that's just a given and um, I'm not going for model accuracy here to match the other one this is just for a proxy this is to make a proxy unit for someone who wanted to do 40k and have one of these on their table this would be a suitable replacement now one thing I, I do want to remind people who are thinking about making these is if you play in like a 40k tournament these aren't allowed uh, proxies are not allowed as I understand it I think you have to read the rules carefully but if you're playing in tournaments you cannot use man-made or handmade uh, ships so just keep that in mind all right now those are good when I'm gonna look at the front of the ship so earlier in the video I designed these in CAD and now they're just going to get glued in place I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to eyeball one set and then I'll use my ruler to make sure they're level. So uh, these are just, I think as long as they look properly placed, they should be okay. They need to be lined up with one another. And it looks to be about an eighth of an inch there spacing, so I'll do that. 
and that looks pretty good. All right, got me two, two of those on there. They seem to be vertically uh, equal. All right, so what I'm going to do, this is kind of tricky. So I'm going to use the right edge nature of this, and I'm going to put it on here like that, and that should allow me to sort of draw a line where I need the top to be. So I'm, I'm placing this edge against the sides of these two to square it, and then drawing a line. And that's supposed to be level, but I know it's not. Well, it kind of is, because this thing is sort of sitting... I don't know. It's, it's pretty accurate. Hmm. I think I may just eyeball it. Use the line as a guide, but then I, then I have about five seconds or so to slide it around and make sure that I'm happy with it. Slide it up a little bit. There we go. All right, and I gotta get the other one. All right. Not using a lot of hot glue here because remember, hot glue does not compress well. So you want, you know, you want it. You don't want a, a, a raised edge, a gap, large gap between there. So the more hot glue you put on there, the more likely you're going to get that kind of error. But uh, that will do. There we go. Doo, doo, doo. All right, now on the back side, we have to do the matching cones here. These were also done in CAD. So uh, let me just uh, get them cleaned up a little bit. So each one of these is going to match one of the intakes here, I guess, on the back. So all I've got to do is sort of just look at it from the side, make sure it's centered both ways. I have a lot of room here to put some glue on so it won't come off once I put it on there. And I'm just looking at it from the side and from the top. and I'm trying to center it like that. Wipe any excess off. There we go. Alright, do the other one. Again, not putting a whole lot of glue because I just I want it to press down. There we go. I mean, somebody at a table could get a ruler out and check all my measurements and say, man, you didn't line these up right. But as far as eyeballing is concerned, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, two more. And that will conclude the 3D printed portion. And I'll get started on the body panels, which is going to really start pulling out the detail uh, in, these, uh, in, this, in this ship. All right, that's pretty good. Good. All right. Now, no, no ship, no creation that you make is going to withstand a lot of hand holding and people messing with it and trying to, you know, if they're grabbing it and moving it and playing with it, anything could pop off. This hot, I'm not using enough hot glue to to ensure it never comes off, but it could. So there we go. All right, it is getting there. All right, up next in the next video, we are going to start doing paneling on this, which will give it sort of an external armor, and it will start making it look more like the actual object that I'm modeling.